little. There we go. Thanks, Zoom lady. So welcome into Friday mornings, end of the week, very gentle wind down yoga class. If this is the first time you've come to this class, we don't do very much. We just kind of ease our way through. And if at any point you think, actually, I just want to stop and lie down, then you absolutely should and can, okay? It's um, finally a little bit warmer and sunnier here today. So make sure that you have some water. As your body and your systems begin to calm down and settle down, you will need to hydrate so that when you get up, you don't feel dizzy. Because sometimes when we do a really deep relaxation, when we come around out of it, we can feel a bit bewildered. So I don't want to leave you bewildered at the beginning of your Friday. Um, okay, I think you may have an understanding that because it's a relaxation class, you're gonna need some cushions, pillows maybe, definitely a belt of some variety and have all of your equipment nearby so you don't have to get up and move around and organize yourself too much. Uh, normally Ross and I do a little bit of a news update at this point, but he's still away on holiday and I'm so, <laughs> I'm so tired from just doing the PT 30 minutes that my brain couldn't really remember what I had to say. So I'm just gonna say, there's probably some news. I'll tell you next week, there we go. I'm gonna come to my mat because I'm very happy to come and do this class today. Some days I have more energy than others. And this one is not one of them. We are gonna start sitting though. I don't know why I've sat facing that way. I think it's because the sky is blue and I wanted to see it. I'm gonna sit on my block. So if you don't have a yoga block, a cushion is fine. I'm also going to put cushions under my knees to a little bit of support. Oh, someone else has come into the waiting room. Right, last one in. I'm not getting up again, there we go. Okay. Catherine Warren, welcome in. <laughs> I'm gonna sit in a position that's comfortable. But what I will say is if you're ready to lie down on your back already and sitting upright is quite tiring, you can either lie down, absolutely fine, or sit against something like a piece of furniture or the wall and just give yourself a bit of support, okay? In this practice, we're really inviting the body to kind of slow down and ease out. So I don't want you to try hard. We're not here to strengthen our spines. We're here to allow the systems and the mind just to settle. Think of it as your well-being practice. <laughs> Hello, Mike. Mine's a cup of tea at the end of class. Thanks, Mike. <coughs> okay. So once you've got comfortable, just let yourself be still. And sometimes finding that stillness, a conscious stillness, it can be a moment that you meet yourself and you actually check in with how you are maybe for the first time. So much of what we do is just on autopilot. But I want you to close your eyes and just kind of feel into yourself. How are you? How's your body? How's your mind? How are you breathing? And I want you to take a moment and just notice what it is that you might need from doing this class. Is it to slow down, to ease out, to calm the systems? And then set that as your intention.
And let's bring our focus now to the breath once more. And I want you just to begin to lengthen it. No matter how you're breathing, just slow it down a little bit. And when we slow the breath down, we're gonna to start to lengthen it down into the abdomen. Slow inhale, slow exhale. And it's this slow, gentle pace that I want you to keep returning to throughout your practice. It's this slow breath and calm, soft movement that can work the magic on the brain switching us into that rest repair mode. Okay, let's come down now onto our backs, onto our mats, and get comfortable. Remember, if you're not someone that's comfortable lying on your back, <clears throat> make any adjustments to suit. It might be that you put the pillow under your spine. It might be that you put cushion under your head. Just make any adjustment to suit yourself. I'm gonna lie down. As we always do, there's lots and lots of familiarity with the stuff that we do in this class. So the brain doesn't have to be constantly trying to work out what are we doing. So once you've done the class a few times, some of the movements will become really familiar, which is good. I don't want your brain in any sense of stretch in this class. So I've either got my arms above my head. Now for some of you, and for me included, this is always a bit of a stretch. I can feel it through my dorsal spine into my upper arms, my triceps. If that's too much of a stretch for you, just take the arms straight out wide and let those shoulders settle down. But I want us just to stay here for a moment. I'm gonna let my knees rest against each other. And I'm breathing slowly in, slowly out. But this time the focus is on lifting and opening up those ribs. I'm getting the breath down into the abdomen. Slow inhale, slow exhale. All right, let the knees come back to being apart. We'll roll up through the back a few times, up into bridge, down again. Remember, you can do one, two, or three of these, just depends how you're feeling. Let's take a slow, deep breath in. As you exhale, we're gonna roll up, and just ease the body up into the air, lifting those hips up. Take a moment here and then gently roll back down, a bit like you're trying to give your spine a massage as you go. So rolling down bit by bit. Just take a moment here, let the back of the hips be heavy. If you're coming with me again, deep breath in. And rolling up, here we go. Lifting those hips up, pressing them up in the air, Hold it there. 
and gently roll down. Again, trying to work each part of the spine bit by bit. And we've got one more, if you're doing one more, you may absolutely just wanna wait and rest. If you're having a go at the third one, inhale, exhale, rolling up. Lifting up. Inhale. And exhale, slowly rolling down. Okay. I'm going to let both legs come down to flat for a moment. Let the arms be out by your side. And just allow a stillness. Slow inhale, slow exhale. Okay, I'm going to bend my right leg, bring it in, give it a hug. Just ease that bent knee in towards my chest. That's it. So we're stretching out the big muscles through the bottom and into the lower back, as well as giving that knee a good squeeze. Make sure you're paying attention to how the knee is feeling. Now, if you want to take this just a little bit deeper, we're gonna lift our head to our knee. That can be quite a bit of effort. And if you're a bit dizzy, I wouldn't suggest this. Here's a good idea. But if you're coming with me, let's take a breath in. As you exhale, lift your head up to your knee. That's it, keep the other leg down. Inhale again. And exhale, lie back down. Okay. All of us, we're gonna take that bent knee and move it out wide to the side. Just open it out. I'm pulling the knee out to the right. Keep the foot and ankle nice and relaxed. And then bring that knee back to center. Change hands on the knee. And we're taking it across the other direction for a bit of a twist. So gently ease it over. Now I've got my right arm wide. And I can feel a lovely pull just across the front of that right shoulder there. I want you to use your breath and send the breath into the shoulder and the ribs. Deep breath in. And bring it back to center. Okay, let's do the other leg before we come into the leg stretches. So slide that leg down. Let it lie right down on the mat. Give it a little wriggle in and out from the foot. And just let that leg lie there feeling heavy, relaxed and released on the floor. Think about how you're breathing. Slow inhale, slow exhale. Good. Let's do the second side. I'm gonna bring in that knee. Left knee comes in, easing in the knee to the chest. Shoulders stay relaxed. Muscles in the face soft. Slow inhale, slow exhale. Again, if you're lifting your head, remember this is optional. Let's take a breath in. As you exhale, lift up. Inhale again. Exhale, release down. Okay, I'm gonna take that bent knee and move it out wide to the side. Just open up across the hip. That's it, pull the knee out and away from center. We're not going across the body yet, but we will now. So I'm bringing that knee back to center, changing hands on the knee and taking that knee over to the side, just a little bit. Feel the stretch down that back arm. Get the breath down into the abdomen. Good, slow inhale, slow exhale. And bring it back to center. All right, and once again, we're just letting that leg lie down on the floor. Really inviting a sense of surrender, of heaviness of the limbs. Slow inhale, slow exhale. All 
Okay. So we're going to take our belt now, which hopefully is not too far away from one of your hands. We'll do our leg stretches. So Supta Parungustasana, which means lying down hand to foot pose. I'm going to bend both of my legs. And you can do as much or as little of this as feels right for you. And it might be that you won't know until you start, but at any point you think, oh, I'm just going to stop. Then you should and can. I'm going to put the belt around the ball of that right foot and just stretch the leg up in the air. So we have three movements that we're going to work through here. The next one might be a little bit strong for some of you. So you can just watch if you want and then make up your mind. You can always play and tinker with it. And if you want to come out, you come out. But this first one is very much for the calf, the back of the leg. And I'm drawing the toes down towards me to get that calf stretch increased a little bit. So don't be afraid to straighten the leg. And if you're working with a bent leg, can you push it a bit further away from you to allow it to straighten? So you're giving those hamstrings enough space for them to really lengthen back out. Yeah, good. I'm taking the belt now just into my right hand. My left hand is going to come onto that bent knee and hug it into my chest. So I've brought the other knee up and I've given it a hug. That's it. Keeping the top leg straight, I'm just turning the toes out on that leg. So watch if you're new. I'm going to take those legs and stretch them wide apart. I'm pulling the bent knee in one direction and the straight leg goes in the other. It might be that you need to keep that extended leg bent just to make things a bit more manageable. But if you want to go for that stretch, then push through to the heel, the inner ankle bone. Make sure you're breathing. And when you're ready, let's take a little bend of the straight leg, bring it all the way back up. Put the other foot and just stand it back on the mat. That's it. So the other foot's down on the mat again. And I'm changing hands on the belt. So this arm now comes down. That's it. Straighten this one out a little bit more and cross it over the bent leg. So it's like I'm crossing my legs. Yeah, that straight leg comes over the top of the bent. It might not do very much, but you're going to feel this stretch here, which is what we're going for. So this is your buttock muscle, obviously, the glutes. And I want you to feel that down into the iliotibial bands, those long tendons that come down the outside edges here. When you're done, <laughs> which I'm sure most of you will be, release and let's straighten that leg down onto the mat. Both legs come to rest. And just take your awareness into the leg that you've been working and see how it feels in comparison to the other one. Just take a stillness, observe. We so very rarely pay attention in micro detail to just the little subtle changes that are happening in our body, unless it's triggered by something that's unpleasant, like pain or something as a result of being unwell. I just want you to observe, feel the blood as it settles back in. Feel the muscles as they soften and relax. We're going to do that whole thing with the other leg. Let's bend both of our legs, put the feet on the mat. I'm taking my belt. I'm going to put the belt around the ball of the left foot and stretching it up in the air. Remember, if there was any part of that set of three that you didn't like, you don't have to do it on this side. So part one, we're focusing on hamstrings and calf and Achilles, drawing those toes down towards you. Jen, is that your cat? <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> Just had a great image of someone's cat who had stood right in front of their camera. It's just a lovely, hairy, fluffy thing. <laughs> so I'm breathing here. So part two, if you're coming with, we're taking the belt just into the left hand and I'm gonna bring that knee up. While the knee comes in, I put my hand on it. 
So I'm turning the top toes out of that straight leg and pulling those legs in opposite directions. It's a strong stretch. So by all means, bend your straight leg if you need to, or just don't hold it for any longer than a couple of breaths. Absolutely fine, your choice. Breathe, but if you're going for that stretch, extend through to that inner ankle bone. Great, let's take a bend in the leg. We're not staying there long. The other foot stands back down on the mat. We straighten up, change hands. That's it. Make sure this top leg is straight and you've switched hands, otherwise you're gonna roll onto your side. And then just cross that leg over, just until you feel the pull, a bit down the outside edge. And like with all of these stretches, you might find one side just feels a little bit tighter than the other. It's okay, that's pretty normal. Breathe, jaw relaxed, forehead soft. And let's gently release the leg and let it lie down. And again, just take your curiosity. How does it feel inside that leg as you put it back down on the floor? Slow inhale, slow exhale. All right. We're gonna do our reclining tree pose now. So I'm bringing my right knee up again, giving it a little hug into the chest and then placing the foot down onto the floor. The sole of the foot will rest on the inside of the leg and the knee will drop out wide to the side. If the knee doesn't like being down there without a bit of support, then just Grab a cushion and stick it underneath that leg and offer it a little bit of support, okay? And I'm gonna take the belt, which I've just put down in my hands. I'm gonna take it and hold the belt sort of about hip width. No, shoulder width. Let's use the right part of the body to measure. And I'm gonna draw those arms back above my head. Just a long stretch along the floor. And if at any point having your arms in this position just feels not right for you too much, makes you feel a bit dizzy or unwell, just bring them back. You don't need to do the arms. But I want you as you're here, if you can, to stretch the arms away above your head and push the heel away of the straight leg. But keep that leg down, keep the heel down. Slow inhale, slow exhale. Okay, now I'm gonna bend the arms to bring them back and gently bring that knee and straighten it back down. Yep, second side. I'm gonna bring the left in, give it a little hug into the chest and place the foot down, the knee goes out. Support the knee if you need to. And let's take those arms once more back above the head. We push the heel away, we stretch the arms away, we tuck the chin in. And we're just focusing on that breath, slow inhale, slow exhale. And if at any point the arms feel too much, let them bend or bring them back. It's important that you monitor what's happening for you. That's it. And breathing in here. And breathing out, bring those arms back, bring the knee back and straighten it down. Okay. Just take a pause, allow a stillness. Slow inhale, slow exhale. Okay, I'm gonna bend both of my legs now and 
I'm going to come onto my side. So just roll over with me. And from here, slowly come on up to being upright. I'm going to do a little bit of work with cat cow. So just working through the spine on your hands and knees. Now, if you're someone who doesn't like being on your hands and knees, then you might just want to sit this one out and just simply breathe with us. Or you can give it a go and see how you feel. But I'm here on my hands and knees. Okay, and we're going to work through just a little bit of movement, loosening up through that spine, through the neck. Toes are under. In fact, I'm going to do a little bit of a toe stretch for you. So I'm just going to sit back on my toes. Some of you will hate this, some of you won't mind. Let's just stretch through those toes if you can. Toes are tucked under, take a little stretch. And release. <laughs> okay, you can give your toes a little wiggle if that helps to relieve the stretch a little bit. All right. So here we go, we're gonna breathe in, lift the chin up, lift the sit bones up, and breathe out as we slowly round the back. Scoop the tummy muscles up. Let your, make sure the head is nice and loose and hanging down. Let's go again, breathing in. And breathing out, round through that spine. So I want you to stay here with a rounded back, and just breathe in and out, but send the breath to the back ribs. Okay, from here, deep breath in. As you exhale, we're gonna lower the chest down by walking the hands forwards and coming to what I call half dog. So you can have the arms straight for a stronger stretch or the elbows bent for a softer stretch and just lengthen through the shoulders, the upper back, the dorsal spine. Slow inhale, slow exhale. Now this can be quite a strong stretch. So if you need to come out, come out. Okay. From here, let's just walk those hands back. We're gonna drop back into child's pose for a moment. You can have the knees wider or nearer, whatever feels right for you. Or if child's pose is not your thing, just hover there with your bum in the air for a bit, head down and we'll catch up with you. We're gonna come back onto our hands and knees now and take a twist as well as doing the cat cow. So I'm gonna come back up. All right, <clears throat> so the first twist I'm gonna do, I'm straightening out the left, no, which leg is that? My right leg. And I'm gonna just, for me, I always tend to, and I don't even really know why, I tend to clench my fist here to give me a bit of height. So what I think I'm doing is actually needing height under my hand. So if you have a cushion or a block or a book, put a bit of uh, height underneath that right hand because it makes everything in the upper back and shoulders a little bit easier to access. This other hand here, my left hand is going on my lower back. And I'm simply going to turn my chest to the side. That's it. Keep the shoulders down. This back toe is on the floor. It's not up in the air. Don't make life hard for yourself. My hand is on the hip, so it's not stretching up and I'm just turning. Sue, so turn the chest the other way. Keep the legs as they are, Sue Wheatley and change hands that's down. There we go. You got it. Breathe slowly in, slowly out. And bring it back to center. Let's do the second side of the twist. So I'm going to move the support. If you're working with one, I advise you to do the same. Again, extend now that uh, left leg. I've got my toes tucked under. We've stretched our toes already. I'm taking the right hand onto my lower back, inhale, exhale, gently turn to the right. Or if you did your other side first, just turn the other way. Breathing slowly in, slowly out. And release. Okay. 
Move the support out the way. Let's come back into that cat cow. Here we go. Breathing in, lift the chin, lift the sit bones. And breathing out, round through the spine. Let's go again. Breathing in. And breathing out. Hold this rounded back. Breathe here, in and out. Make sure the head is down, the neck is long. And then I'm gonna walk those hands forwards, taking that half dog stretch, head down, elbows either bent or straight, however much you want to work there. Jaw relaxed, tongue soft. And now you can either go back down into child's pose again, or you can bring the hands back and gently and, and sort of smoothly ease yourself up into face down dog. So if you're new to this class and you've come from rest repair, I'm going to encourage you to do less rather than more. So please do the child's pose option rather than the dog pose. Okay. Really, really about undoing and unwinding rather than trying to push at all. That's it. Okay. Make sure the head is nice and relaxed. Victoria, just check your neck is relaxed. Check that head. Yeah. <laughs> Muscles in the face soft, everyone. Okay, everyone down, come into child's pose. Let's rest. That's it. No matter how tempting for some of you it might be to do more, I really don't want you to. So you're resting in a position now, you're either down on your heels in child's pose or you're on your side in a recovery type position, if that's better for you. Okay, I'm going to take um, a couple of pillows now or a bolster and we're going to lie back over some support and do uh, a pose where we will be still apart from a little bit of work in the shoulders if you want to. So if you've got pillows, I'd like at least two pillows and maybe you need a cushion for your head. If you've got a bolster, that's great because they're pretty fun. I'm going to lie back. Now, if you're someone whose knees are a little bit grumbly and achy, you will benefit from cushion underneath because we're going to be taking Baddha Konasana, which means that those knees and those hips are going to be taking, taken into quite a strong stretch. So I am going to support mine. I would encourage you to do the same because we're going to be here for a few breaths and I'm lying back over the support. So make sure you've got the chest and the head lifted up, but I'm not sitting on the support. My bottom is on the floor. Okay, but those knees are wide and there's definitely support. Now, you can either, if you want a stronger stretch for your shoulders here, you can pick up your belt again and do exactly what we've been doing with the arms and take the belt in the hands and take the arms over the head. It's absolutely fine for you to just take the arms back for a moment and let them stretch and then bring them down. Or if you don't want to take them back above the head at all, just out wide to the side is a really lovely stretch too. But it is important that you don't always choose the harder option. This is a pattern that I'm encouraging you to break in this class. We are often, we are often likely to go, oh, well, I'll just do the harder option because that's the best choice. It's often not the best choice. Giving yourself permission to do less is a gift to your mind and your body. Breathe. So the position that you're in now should be comfortable. And if you need to keep adding support under the knees or a bit of height under the head, then make sure you are doing so. Don't compromise and stay still if it doesn't feel quite right.
Jaw relaxed, tongue soft. So when we hold a position, it allows not just the muscles to gently release, but also, also the fascia, so your ligaments, tendons, and all of the, the other bits and pieces involved around the joints of the body. So just allowing this stillness. Slow, soft breath in, slow, long breath out. Okay. I'm going to bring my knees back together one at a time. It makes it a little bit easier to manage, a bit easier on the lower back. And then to come off, I'm going to roll onto my side. So don't try and sit up from where you are, just roll onto your side. Now, because we have the support there that we've been working with, I'm going to come right over. Bring my support in and take supported child pose. Sitting back on the heels, basically giving my pillows, my bolster, a bit of a hug. That's it, give as much height as you need. Try and get the bottom down towards the heels if you can. And if you can't, I want you to put more height under the head so that the head isn't lower than the bottom. Okay, that's good. Good, Andre. I think you've balanced yourself out there. <laughs> that's it. But remember, if this position is not something that you enjoy because those knees don't like it, onto your side, recovery pose, you can put your knee up. Great. Head to one side so that you're not face down in the cushion struggling to breathe. Sometimes, although it might feel obvious, we sort of don't realize what we do. <laughs> so just a little note if anyone is face down to the side. I'm gonna turn my head the other way just to let the neck release in the other direction. Breathing into those back ribs, creating space. Okay. Let's gently bring the head back to center and slowly, carefully come up. So I'm gonna sit up for a moment or two I'm going to sit on a block or a cushion and have my belt nearby. We'll just do some stretches for the back and the back of the legs. Okay. So we we'll want you to make sure you're not going to work too deep. And I'm going to invite you to put a cushion under the back of the knees. So we'll start with a position called Pashimottanasana, that means full forward bend. But with something under the knees, or it could be a bolster. If your hamstrings are tight, put something big under there. I'm going to take my belt and put it around the feet, both of my feet. And just pull on the belt and lift up a little bit. Yeah. So as you can see, I've got a very bent leg here and I encourage you to do the same. Because we're trying to soften and ease out through the lower back rather than push anything into a deep stretch. Okay. We're undoing the knots, not adding to them. All right, let's go together. We're going to breathe in, lift up a little bit, and then just walk your hands forwards now. It'll depend on your flexibility, how far you get. If you can touch the feet, great. If you want to stay with the belt, fine. If after a little bit with the belt, it's tiring, just let those hands rest down on the floor. But what I will invite you all to do is let the head 
go slowly. So I've got a lovely bent leg, which allows my pelvis to tilt forwards. And I'm just breathing in to my back, slowly in, slowly out. Remember, if at any point you think, actually, I would like to just rest now, then you do that. Listen to your body. There is no obligation to do every single pose. Good. Jaw soft, muscles in the face soft. And slowly, gently lift your head and just walk your hands back up those legs. Just walk them back up. I'm putting my cushion to the side. Because we're going to take a twist. So I've got my legs down. And I'm bringing the right foot up. That's it. So you can either leave the foot here or you can step it across, which just makes it a little bit stronger as a twist down the outside edge of the hip. Remember, if you're someone that always chooses the harder option, question yourself. Is that the right thing for me today? I'm going to hook the opposite arm around that knee. So this is my left arm, this is my right knee, and I'm going to just take the other arm up, breathing in and breathing out. Fingertips come down. Turn the chest gently, turn the tummy past the thigh, that's it. Let the muscles in the face relax. Andre, turn the other way with your chest and change the arms around the knee. So that arm you've got, yeah, that's it, that's it, perfect, you got it. Lift that spine up, yeah, beautiful, good folks. Now check the jaw, check the forehead. Slow inhale, slow exhale. Bring it back to center. Straighten that leg down. Bring the other knee up. So whichever you did on the first side, do on the second. The foot's either here or it's stepping over. Hook the arm around and let's lift, inhale. Exhale, turn, fingertips touch down. Drawing the chest around, the tummy around. Muscles in the face soft. That's it, good. Get the breath slowly down into the abdomen. Great. Inhale. And exhale, bring yourself back. Okay, I'm going to take Paschimottanasana one more time. So take the cushion, ulster pillow under the back of the legs. Take the belt around the feet. Lift up, stretching up through the spine. <laughs> Claire, you can ask him to leave. <laughs> Let's take a deep breath in. As we exhale, we're gonna walk those feet forwards and I'm gonna let my head come down. Breathing into the back of the body. Slow inhale, slow exhale. Good. And when you're ready, gently lifting the head, slowly come on up. We're coming down onto our backs now. So if you're already down there, we're catching you up. Let's come with any equipment out of the way for the moment and lie back down. So if you like something under your head, by all means, put something under your head now. I'm going to take my arms out wide to the side. Just slide any cushions out the way that may be there. And all we're going to do is walk those feet in towards the bottom 
as much as you can and then gently drop the knees over, first of all, to the right. So I'm gonna let my lower leg drop down and the other leg sort of just hovers in space a little bit. But the arms are out wide, breathe here. And then bring the top leg back, then the bottom leg. And we're gonna drop them over to the second side. So when you're ready, let them release down other direction. Breathing down into the abdomen, slow inhale, slow exhale. And bring it back to center. All right. I'm gonna have the soles of the feet together here just for another moment. Invite that stretch back into the hip. So this is the third time we've done this stretch today. Just opening out, gently, not forcing, not pressing, letting gravity stretch us for a moment. And again, because we're not holding long and we have no support, I'm bringing one knee back and then the other. So now to stretch out the lower back behind the sacrum and crossing that right thigh over the left thigh. And I'm going to bring those knees up, if you can, into a little bit of a hug. So just draw them in. I've got one hand on each knee and just drawing them in gently. Shoulders relaxed. Head heavy, slow inhale, slow exhale. And release on that side. Let's switch them around. Complete crossover of the legs and lifting up second side. Slow inhale, slow exhale. And again, when you're ready, let's release on that side. Okay. Last one, I've got both knees in and I'm gonna draw, keeping the legs together, draw a clock face on my lower back by just rolling those knees around slowly in one direction. Don't worry if you get any little clunks and clicks. Let's go around again, clockwise. So I have to push the knees away from me to reach 12, move them around to the side to get three, down in, into the lower back, six and then let's go the other direction anti-clockwise just easing through the lumbar that's it it's a really gentle movement but it's a circle nonetheless you're definitely moving the, the legs away from you out to the side and back okay and now straighten down the legs and I want you to get comfortable. So it might be that you put a bolster or pillow under the back of the knees. For some of you, that will be really good to help relax the abdomen, take any tension out of the breathing. If there's any there, definitely something under the head if that's something that you like. If you're at all chilly, let's get those blankets on or throws or just a light cover. But if you're happy as you are, and just lie down. This would be a great moment to give yourself a little drink of water before you kind of really work on your breath and slowing down. So if you're at all dehydrated, take a drink, which is what I'm gonna do if I can find it. What's that? Okay. So you are 
comfortable. That's it. Get yourself settled. And let the whole of the body sink down, surrender down to the floor. The jaws relaxed, the tongue is soft in the mouth. And all of the muscles in the face have come into deep rest. The shoulders, upper arm, lower arm, relaxed, released. The palms are soft and those fingers are lightly curled. All the time, that breath is moving slowly in and slowly out through the nose. The ribs have been loosened and released. The intercostal muscles between each rib have eased a little bit. So the movement around the rib cage as the breath moves in and the breath moves out is fluid, soft, without resistance. The abdomen now softer too, gently lifts with the inhale, drops with the exhale. And again, that breath moves slowly in, slowly out. The back of the hips are heavy. The front of thigh is relaxed and soft. The legs have rolled gently apart. Above the knee, below the knee, front and back of the knee, soft, released and relaxed. The shin, the calf, the back of heel, the whole of the lower leg, Heavy, released, relaxed. Top of foot, sole of foot and toes. Soft, released and relaxed. So the mind and body now working with each other, not against moving you into that conscious shift from sympathetic to parasympathetic nervous system. The body and mind feel safe and calm. And that slow breath, constantly maintaining the link between mind and body. I am relaxed. I am calm, I am peaceful. And each time you exhale, you're allowing the body to sink down into a slightly deeper state of deep rest. Slow inhale, slow exhale. Yeah. 
And now, taking a slow, deep breath in. Gently move your fingers and your toes. And you can roll very slowly onto your side. Now, by all means, you can stay on your side in this deep rest mode. And the class will simply log out in a moment and you can carry on. If you want to sit up and close the class with me, then do. You have no obligation to come to being upright right now. I'm going to bring my hands together by heart center. Sit tall and long through the spine. And just take a moment to notice how you are now at the end of the session. Allow it to stillness. And now let's bring those hands up to the forehead for right thought. To the mouth for right word and back to the heart for right action. Namaste. Well done, folks. Good. You've just given your whole mind and body a little bit of a treat on a Friday morning. So have a wonderful day, have a wonderful weekend. Who knows what will happen with the football? <laughs> Look, I've mentioned it twice. I never talk about football. I feel like I should, I don't know. Claire, Claire Gilman's holding up her England flag. Yes. <laughs> I saw that. Have a good we'll, weekend. We'll catch up on the other side and who knows how it'll be. Um, folks, take care of yourselves. Have a big drink of water before you do anything else today. Let me send you lots of love. The sun has come out. Well, it has down here anyway. Um, I'll see you next week. Lots of love, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye, love. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.